All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you guys another video. So here today, we're gonna to be talking about some helpful information that you might need if you're interested in starting a Cardano stake pool. So I went ahead and got mine up and running, super excited about that. I wanted to share with you all some of my thoughts as I went through the process, and hopefully you're able to find some resources from this video helpful to you. So if you guys are interested in that type of content, be sure to stay tuned. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video here today. If you guys do find some value from this video, be sure to smash that like button for me. If you guys are new to the channel and if you enjoy content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I wanna keep you guys informed and up to date. Click that notification bell so you can get notified when I post a new video. Essentially with this video, I wanted to come out and let you guys know I've successfully completed the process of getting the Cardano stake pool up and running. Very excited, I'm just could not be more uh, grateful for all the uh, help and support from the community. It's, uh, it's really been quite a journey for me. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update about that. We're also going to be taking a look at some of the resources that I use throughout that process. So if you guys are interested in building a Cardano stake pool for yourself, uh, hopefully you're able to find some valuable information. We're going to be actually taking a look over at the computer here in just a moment, showing you guys some of the websites and resources that I used as I went through the process of building. Uh, one thing I did want to say here is this, with this video is that um, I actually went ahead and purchased the Cardano on the Rocks stake pool kit. So I went through the process of building it out and for some reason I wasn't able to use that configuration. So there was a problem with me being able to remote access into the uh, operating system the way that they had it set up where you have the Cardano on the Rock Stake Pool kit and you have the little LED and the LCD. So they had the operating system configured to work with that setup. I wasn't able to get that operating. So what I wanted to show you guys is basically what my setup looks like right now. I'm gonna post a picture for you guys here. And basically with that, what I ended up doing was I took out the LED, I took out the display, and I replaced it with another monitor. So I ended up actually having a completely different setup than what was intended. So that was something that I did wanna share with you guys here. What I did was I got a separate monitor and I ended up using the Rock Pi as a desktop. So that's how I set it up using a different image to flash the EMMC module. Uh, I know it's gonna be a lot of technical talk here in this video, guys. If you do have any questions about anything that I'm saying here, if you guys do need help throughout the entire process, there's lots of resources. I'm gonna point you in the right direction. I'm gonna do my best to be able to answer any questions for you guys. If you do need help, be sure to leave any comments down in the comments section below. Uh, but basically going back to what I did with my configuration. So I downloaded a different version of Linux. So we're gonna be looking at all of that here. I'm gonna be sure to provide as many resources as I can. So wanted to share that with you guys here as well. Now we're currently up and running. We're available for delegation on the incentivized testnet. Quick disclaimer, I am gonna mention this again at the uh, later part of this video. Now, if you're interested in starting a Cardano stake pool, currently where we're at in the development is the Rust code base for the testnet. We've gone through the process of the Byron reboot, which was for mainnet. That was a mainnet upgrade that's gonna prepare the network for Shelly. Now, if you're a stake pool operator running on the testnet, we are gonna be anticipating the transition over into Haskell very, very soon. So that's something to keep in mind if you are gonna be uh, starting a Cardano stake pool uh, right now, we're currently running on the Rust code base. We're gonna be transitioning over to Haskell, configuring uh, all the settings and working out all the bugs in Haskell. And once everything is ready to be rolled out on mainnet, that's when we'll see Shelly ship out. So that's something to keep in mind. We should be anticipating that release probably within the next few weeks, if not maybe the next month. Uh, it's very hard to say with these types of software development things, uh, but those are just some things to keep in mind if you are gonna start the process right now. So those are just some of my two cents. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at the computer here just so I can show you guys a little bit better and more in detail explaining some of the websites and resources that I used to get the build completed. Let's take a look. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. So what we're looking at here, I wanted to just dive into the computer a little bit and show you guys some resources if you're interested in getting a Cardano stake pool off the ground. 
So in the previous part of this video, I talked a little bit about my experience and you know what I would consider if you are looking at building something like this. Um, this is basically where I started. So if you guys are interested in this, I'm gonna leave all the links to what we're talking about here in the video down in the description below. So if you guys wanna check it out. Essentially, this is the Cardano on the Rocks uh, website. It's edu.clio.1. And really like this website because it goes through and pieces out the entire steps as to like how to configure the software, um, the 3D printed case, uh, what to buy in terms of your uh, hardware. So really like how they've done that here. What we're looking at, this is kind of like an explainer video, just giving you an overview as to what it is that you're gonna be building. And then the tabs here on the left-hand side do a better job of just kind of explaining what exactly it is that we're doing here. So this gives you an overview of all the parts that you're gonna be using. Uh, the 3D printed case, so you can actually download the files directly from this website that's available for you here. If you do have your own 3D printer, you can take care of that. And then it gives you an option to purchase these different kits. So now this uh, full disclaimer, guys, as far as what we're looking at here with the situation going on with China, uh, if you are going to be ordering this kit, uh, just keep in mind there might be a bit of a delay as far as receiving the item. So, you know, just do with that what you will, just my opinion. But these are all the uh, different kits that you're able to purchase here. You can also purchase the 3D printed case. It gives you a link for all of these uh, shops where you can purchase them. And then if we go down here as well, it talks about flashing the image. Uh, one thing I wanted to show in this, so you can download the Cardano on the Rocks edition of the Armbian Linux image. And what this is intended to do is work with the LED and the OLED display that comes with this configuration. Now, I talked earlier about how I didn't end up using this configuration. I actually had to get a third-party display, like a, like a monitor, and uh, connect it like that. So I actually ended up configuring my node to work almost like a desktop computer as opposed to having this configuration. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you are gonna flash your EMMC module with the Armbian Linux image, it's gonna work with the LED and the OLED display. However, what I did was I used a different version of Linux. I actually used a Debian Linux image for the Rock Pi, and that allowed me to set it up as a desktop and use a third-party monitor. So those are just some things to keep in mind. You can download the Armbian image here. There's a link for you. And then if we go down further, it's talking about the actual assembly of the, the project. So I did go ahead and create a video for this as well. It's gonna be here on the top right, check it out. But there is also a video directly from Allnet and they talk about how to go through the process here. And then it goes through more setup processes talking about how to configure your LED and your display. Um, so yeah, those are just some things that you might wanna check out if you are interested in looking at the Cardano on the Rock stake pool. Uh, what I would suggest though, so this is just my opinion, uh, there's resources here to install Jormungandr. Uh, what I would do is actually take a look at some of the other resources that are available to the community. I mean, this is very basic in terms of the instructions to configure your node. Um, so it, with that being said, I wanted to show you guys this here. So shout out to Chris Graf. Uh, he actually created this uh, Jormungandr for noobs. So it's kind of like a tutorial that he made uh, talking about how to install Jormungandr on Linux. So if you guys wanna check it out, link is also down in the description. Lots of value from this. So, you know, very grateful that there's members of the community that are able to provide value like this. Uh, very, very helpful. I would recommend you guys check this out because I think it explains the process in a bit more detail. So you might be able to find some value from this here. And then another thing also, if you are, let's say if you're not necessarily running on Linux, let's say if you have a Mac or let's say if you have Windows, uh, POA, Proof of Africa. So shout out to Max and shout out to the Cardano Community Podcast. Um, lots of members in the community in Africa are helping uh, community members get stake pools up and running as well. Nice thing about this guide is that it actually shows you how to install VirtualBox. Uh, what VirtualBox allows you to do is uh, have an operating system inside of an operating system. So in that instance, it would be beneficial if you're, let's say if you're running on a Mac or on a Windows, if you wanted to uh, use Linux, which is what I would recommend is, uh, because it's just gonna be better for what we're trying to do here in terms of server and setting up the node. 
Uh, anyway, so VirtualBox allows you to have Linux inside of a Mac operating system or Windows operating system. So it's very nice. It shows you how to do that here in this guide. Also, you know, it's just a great way to be able to see how other people have gone through the process of setting it up. I know that both of these uh, people are on Telegram, so you can check them out. Uh, I would recommend it, especially if you do have questions. There is also a Telegram group. Uh, I'll be sure to just leave a picture for you guys here so that way you're able to see exactly what it's called. Uh, but basically, it's just the Cardano Shelly ITN, and um, it's a Telegram group. And they basically, it's just a whole bunch of aspiring stake pool operators helping each other out, answering questions. That is a great resource as well. There are over 3,500 members currently. So I'm sure you'll be able to answer or get any questions that you have answered in that Telegram group. So those are just some of the key things that I wanted to show you guys here. I think that you'll be able to get a better idea of what it's going to take to get this off the ground by watching this video here today. Hopefully you did find some value from it. If you do have any questions or you know if you just wanted to uh, get some of my perspective, let me know down in the description below. If there's any way I can help you guys out, I would love to be of service to you. I really do wanna see everybody in this community succeed. So anyway guys, that is it for this video here today. I thank you so much for watching and until the next one, take care.